Okay, hello. Uh, Thomas Tennis here again with another fabulous tip. Uh, today I want to talk about the most important body part for hitting a tennis ball. You know, we, we're ignoring the feet because, of course, without the feet, you don't get to the place where you can hit a ball. But just talking about what's in your body that makes a great tennis stroke, and that's what we're going to work on today. So what do you think it is? You think the most important part is your is your core or your shoulders or your hips or your wrist. A lot of people go, you're going to lag and lag and hit, okay? That's probably kind of what happens, but the by far the most important part of the tennis stroke by miles is Arnold and Popeye, your upper arm and your forearm. And what's in between is your elbow. So that's the most important part in the tennis stroke. And today I'm gonna to show you why. Um, okay, so first of all, let's just, let's go right down the, the train here and show you what happens with each body part. Now the shoulder, it's important, but a lot of times when you're running out this way, you can barely get to the ball. How do you turn your shoulder? You can't turn your shoulder. How do you turn your hips? How do you get your weight into a shot when you're running way out there to get a ball? You have to have a stroke that's gonna work in all conditions no matter where you are in the court you want the same basic stroke so sometimes you can't drive your shoulder into the ball and sometimes you can't drive your hips into the ball there's a lot of variations it's not like golf where you're over it and you can do the same darn thing every time boom tennis obviously is not golf it's just you're running around to get the ball which is why i like it a lot better but um, anyway so Let's go right down the line here and talk about each body part and what happens. Now, this is gonna seem complicated, but believe me, it's not, because if you do it, and it's what all pros do, I'm gonna show you that all pros do what I'm telling you. Well, they learned it as little kids. So for one thing, nobody taught them this because there is nobody on the net or on any tennis lesson I've ever seen that teaches what I'm gonna teach, what I'm gonna show you today. So let's go right down the line and let's talk about what happens. If you understand a little bit about physics, you'll understand what a moment arm is and what uh, an axis of rotation is. So of course, the first thing that's gonna happen, once you get your, you get your elbow back, now you've taken, and you got your shoulder back because your elbow went back, and I have that on another video, but you wanna take your elbow back, and back here, your elbow wants to be bent. It does not wanna be straight back here. It, it, this'll really screw your lesson up. A lot of girl, uh, WTA players, they, they get their arms way back here. That, that's terrible because you're losing a lot of power and I'm going to show you why. But first thing, you get your elbow back, your elbow is bent into a 90 degree angle here, okay? The next thing that's going to happen is your upper arm. Now, we're talking only about your upper arm right now, that part. Your upper arm is going to swing forward and not rotate. You cannot rotate it until you get right up to a, about your side here now it's going to want to rotate so you're going to rotate your upper arm and you're going to get this beautiful arc which is really critical this beautiful arc right there you want to see that happening with your racket every time no matter which body part we're talking about okay so we're going to drop your elbow okay and now your upper arm is going to rotate and because because you have kind of an l in your arm you're gonna have a huge moment arm, okay? So, the, the first thing that happens is you swing without rotating and you continue rotating and you swing, and that's your upper arm. Now, the reason it works if you've had any physics, but it's pretty basic and simple. Everybody's taking a, a little uh, paper clip and bend it into an L and spin, you spin it and the, the, the moment arm goes around like crazy. You know, this is kind of what it looks like to me. This is the axis of rotation, okay? And this is the moment arm. Now, if I just turn the axis of rotation maybe an inch or an inch and a half, look how far, look how far this thing goes. Well, in tennis, you have the same thing, see? So, if you don't understand axis of rotation, look it up, but it's pretty simple. Or bend a, bend a, a paper clip into an L and, and, and spin the axis of rotation and the long part will be going around like crazy at about 10, 10 or 100 times the speed. So with tennis, you have the same thing. This has been into an L. 
as I come forward, I'm I'm rotating my mo my uh, axis of rotation, which is my upper arm. Okay, and and this is the moment arm. Now, the longer you make the the moment arm, the harder you're going to hit the ball. So you want if you take a look at most pros, their hands are down, and the racket is in line with their forearm because that makes a very long moment arm. Okay. On the two-handed backhand, note how the forearm is in perfect alignment with the racket handle and his lower hand on the racket is down. Look how long Alcarez makes his arm, forearm and racket. And again his hand is down so he can line up his racket handle and forearm and his moment arm is really long. From this position he will be hinging his elbow, which will give him tremendous power. So take a look at this. I'm just barely doing anything with my upper arm, but look how far my racket moves. <laughs> tremendous. And that, that is what's called a mechanical advantage, and it's huge. Okay, so... So make your, put your hand down. Don't have your hand up when you hit it, uh, the forehand down in, so that your racket is in line with your forearm. And just to, to learn this part, just stand there, take a racket and just take a look and you go, my God, I'm, I'm rotating my upper arm a couple inches. This thing is rotating six feet. So there's a huge source of power. Now let's move on from the axis of rotation or the upper arm to the elbow. Now the elbow, you get tons of power from the elbow. So now you're gonna bring your racket back, your elbow's gonna be bent, your arm is in about a 90 degree angle back here. So now as you come forward and you rotate this, what's gonna happen is right about here, your arm is gonna straighten out, okay? Get pretty straight. Because what's gonna happen is when you get about here, <laughs> Your, your, your elbow is going to act like a hinge, like a door slamming, okay? So you're going to come like this. This is going to be straight, hinge. Your elbow goes into a hinge, and it's going to be, your arm is going to be kind of pretty straight. You're starting out with a big mechanical advantage. Now when you get to here, you got another mechanical advantage, your elbow, okay? Your elbow is going to go like this, almost straight, and then it's going to hinge. Pretend like you're slamming a door. That's how your elbow works, okay? So on a two-handed backhand, but so you've got to get this shoulder down. If you get this shoulder down, look at the look at the hinging action I get from my elbows. So I'm so I'm gonna be kind of bent back here as I come forward. I'm gonna straighten my arms. They're gonna be straight until you come up here, and now they're gonna start hinging. So your elbows hinge, okay? Like this, like that. Let's say I put a, a big bag right here and I'm going to slap into it. I'm going to go. See my elbow? Tremendous power from your elbow. Now your elbow operates your, your forearm. Okay, I call the forearm Popeye. It creates a lot of power. Somebody's always mowing every time I get out here, so I hope this will work. But your forearm creates a lot of power because it's being closed by your elbow. And you, when you get to the ball, you might want to roll your arm just a little bit. That'll give you a little more spin. So you got to mess around with that. Okay, I waited all this time for this guy to quit whatever he's doing. And as soon as I start, he does it again. But hopefully you can hear this okay. And now the racket, you want the racket to be in a hinging position. But if you just take it back and just snap, it's going to, your balls are going to go all over the place. So you got to follow the golden mean. You got to follow the arc with your, with your wrist. So if you don't hold it tight, if you don't hold the racket tight, it's gonna it's gonna just come right around so nicely like that. But see, I'm still making this beautiful arc right here, okay, like that. Okay, here's Monfield doing exactly what I'm talking about. His arm is in an L. Then he swings and rotates it. Then he straightens it and hinges his elbow. Okay, and the same thing here. You you, you can just kind of relax your wrists, and they'll automatically whip into the ball and you want to make sure you hit the ball at the peak of the arc here's this arc right here peak of the arc here's the peak of the arc 
boom, you want to hit it right there. You don't want to be flopping around and making a funny looking arc. So, on a one-handed backhand, <laughs> on a one-handed backhand, what you want to do is on the back swing, your elbow is going to be bent into a 90 degrees. So now I'm, I'm going to come down and the mechanical advantage is going to be the angle of your racket with your whole arm. So your arm is going to rotate. See that? I'm rotating. My arm is only moving an inch or two, but my racket's moving four or five feet. See? That's source of power number one. Source of power number two is the hinging of your elbow, but it's backwards. Your elbow is going to straighten. Here it's going to close. That hinge closes. Two hands, that hinge closes. One hand, this hinge opens. So it's going to go to straight. So just before you hit the ball, your arm is going to be straight. But you're going to really get a lot of racket momentum from this hinging motion right there. So you've got mechanical advantage on a one-hander. You've got mechanical advantage with your racket angle like that. And your elbow is going to straighten. And you're going to kill it. So upper arm is an axis of rotation. Tremendous mechanical advantage. Okay, your elbow is going to act like a hinge. And you got to make sure the hinge is facing the right way. You can't fall backwards because your hinge is going to be going that way. You've got to hit this so that the hinge is going that way. Your wrist, of course, fairly relaxed. And it's going to go backwards and forwards almost automatically. But make sure, again, you're on that same arc. And that's it. Okay, here's college Division One champion Jim Snyder demonstrating how he swings and rotates his upper arm. Then he straightens his arms and hinges his elbows. Well, that, that, that's it, folks.